Google just launched Anti Gravity, which is the next generation AI assisted IDE. This is similar to things like Cursor, which you might have used for coding earlier. There's also WindSurf, which is also an AI assisted IDE. And then finally, you also have Amazon's Kiro, which is again another one from Amazon. So in this video, we're going to look at the key features of Google Anti Gravity and all the benefits like access to Gemini 3 that come with it. We have an agent inbox. So here you can have multiple workspaces. You can click on any one of them and then actually look at all the chat conversation that you've had with the agent. You can follow the agent's work and look at all the artifacts and you can review all the changes. You can then control the browser using the agent where the agent can actually check its work. You have access to the planning mode over here and the fast mode and you have access to different kinds of models over here. And this is the entire agent manager view. If you close this, you can actually go back to your IDE view as well. All right. So to begin with, this was launched on November 18th. And one of the key benefits that we get from Google Antigravity, which is also mentioned in their blog, is that uh, it's available in public preview at no charge for now. So there's a generous rate limit on Gemini 3 Pro usage that you get with this. And remember, Gemini 3 is the new model from Google much better than the previous Gemini 2.5. And you're getting this for free in the public preview at no charge. So you can just log in through your Gmail account and you can actually use it. And we're just going to look at how to do that. Apart from this, it's also important to look at the core tenets that anti-gravity brings in because we already have a lot of agentic IDEs. So what is different with anti-gravity? So as they mentioned in their blog, the first thing is trust. They want the user to trust the work that the agent is doing. And uh, right now the IDs that we have either show you the final code change or they show you each and every single action. But over here, the agent will try to build trust by showing you artifacts and verification results. So Antigravity provides context on agentic work at a more natural task level abstraction with the necessary and sufficient set of artifacts and verification results. And this, is help, this helps the user to gain that trust in the work that the agent is doing. The other thing that anti-gravity brings in is the agent manager. So right now all the IDEs have the surfaces where you actually write the code and the agents are integrated in those surfaces and you get features like tab completions or inline commands and a chat box on the side. So that is the primary view in anti-gravity as well. That's what anti-gravity offers, but it also offers something called a mission control for agents. This is called an agent manager. So this agent manager is like a mission control for spawning, orchestrating and observing multiple agents across multiple workspaces in parallel. The other thing is Google Antigravity provides artifact level feedback. So artifacts are basically used to see the progress of the agent and you can actually provide feedback on that using comments and this will then be automatically incorporated into the agent's execution. And finally, there's also an aspect of self-improvement. So anti-gravity basically uh, has a knowledge management system where it retrieves and contributes to a knowledge base. And this helps it complete a particular subtask by learning from past work. So those are the key features and you can try it out. You can look at this blog and Google anti-gravity for individuals right now comes at no charge. So you can just use your Gmail account and it gives you access to Gemini 3, which is the new model along with some other models over here. To download Antigravity, just visit antigravity.google and then click on the download button for your own operating system. So I'm going to click for download for Mac OS and this is going to download a DMG file which you can then install to your applications. Once you have installed Antigravity, it gets you to the welcome screen and over here you can just press the next button. You can choose a setup flow which says you can either import from the other IDs or start fresh. There's also an editor theme choice so you can actually go for dark, Tokyo night, light or solarized light. And then it offers you a choice of how do you want to use anti-gravity agent. So you can have either agent driven development. So over here, basically the agent is not going to request for reviews. So terminal execution policy will be turbo and the review policy will be always proceed. There's also agent assisted development where term terminal execution policy will be auto and the review policy will be agent decides. So the agent will occasionally request for review. This is a recommended option. You can actually check out the other ones as well. Now then you can configure your editor. So you have the option of installing the command line, which is A G Y. So I'm going to do that right now. There'll be an option to install popular extensions. So you can install those. 
and then you have key bindings which you can actually choose over here. So I'm going to let the defaults be and we can click on next over here. And finally, you need to sign in with your Google account. So let's do that. You then have the terms of use and then you come to this home page for anti-gravity. You can zoom in a bit to see this more clearly. Now, this is your typical Visual Studio code. You can actually open a folder over here. You can open the agent manager by clicking over here. This brings up your agent manager window. Let's close this for now. And you also have browser integration over here. So you can click on the browser button over here and this is going to launch a browser for you. You can install the extension from here. And as you can see, it says over here that you can bring anti-gravity into your browser. And this helps the agent to test features, handle browser tasks, etc. So I'm going to install the extension by clicking this. So let's head back to the home screen. And now you finally have the chat box over here, which is a very common feature in all the agentic IDs that you might have seen. What we can see over here is that we have access to Gemini 3 Pro High. There's also other models available over here. We also have the mode over here. So there are two conversation modes. One is planning. The agent can plan before executing tasks used for deep research, complex tasks or collaborative work. And then there's the fast mode where the agent will execute tasks directly used for simple tasks that can be completed faster. All right, so now let me try to open a workspace and try to get some work done with this and let's see how this works. All right, so I've opened a project over here and I have a landing page for that project. And as a task, I just want to test this ID out. So I'm going to ask it to actually redo the landing page based on whatever it thinks is actually a good landing page. So let me open the browser over here. Once you have the extension for anti-gravity installed and you are signed in with your Google account, you'll see the anti-gravity browser control window over here and the agent can click, scroll, type and navigate web pages automatically. So you can look at that. There's some example use cases like iterating on website designs and implementations. And uh, this is pretty good for the use case that I have in mind right now to redesign a landing page that I already have made, right? So this is a very bare bones landing page that I have right now. And let me try to redesign this with anti-gravity. So I'm going to head back to the IDE and click on open agent manager. All right, so here I can actually run multiple tasks on multiple workspaces and manage them all over here. There's an inbox over here where I can start the conversation. So let me click on a start conversation over here. All right, and it seems we have to click on next over here to go through the initial screen. And now we have the new conversation in playground. So I'm going to change the workspace to the AI language and let's now ask it to redo the landing page. All right, so I'm basically asking it to plan and take a stab at doing the landing page entirely again. And let's click on send. Now I have the planning mode on and I have Gemini 3 Pro High. So I'm hoping for a good result and let's see what it does. All right, so it's thought for four seconds. It's analyzed the landing page V3. It's reading the current implementation and it's reading component files to understand the current structure, but we have uh, exceeded the model quota limit. So we're going to select another model over here. So we have Gemini 3 Pro Low, we have 4.5 Thinking and we have GPT OSS 120B. So I'm going to go with 3 Pro Low and let's just check out how this works. Let's say continue over here and I hope it continues from where it left off. Okay, so it's developing the plan, it's defining the new structure and here you have the implementation plan. So this is an artifact and I can actually then look at it and write comments on it if I find something to be changed. But for now, I'm going to let it be and let it run. There's also a follow button over here. And if you click on this, the agent is actually going to uh, you know, inform you of all the things that it's doing and you'll follow along with the agent. All right, so it's generated some assets. It co it's copying those assets over here and it's actually updating the pubspec.yml file. So it's created an infographic section over here and there's a features section dot dot and an infographic section dot dot file. So while it's doing all this, you can actually also click on review changes and you can see the changes that it has made. So these are all the files that it has changed. So it's pubspec.yml, this features underscore section dot dot. So that's all, you know, it's a new file that has, it has created and so on. Again, the, the aim over here is just to check out what it can do on its own. And uh, when you're actually implementing this in another uh, production project, you might want to actually then look through all the changes it's doing because this is mostly an agent driven development effort that we're doing over here. You might want to do an agent assisted development where you actually review each and every change that it does. All right, so I think it's done with all the changes it wanted to do. Let's say, can you run and preview this for me? Okay, so now it's actually running the app for me. And you can see that it's waiting for the connection from a debug service on web server. 
and uh, I have a message over here that anti-gravity would like to use the browser. So let's click on setup over here and I've already set this up. So I'm just going to check what the issue is. Okay, so this, for some reason, I need to install the extension again and, and here I have uh, this working now. All right, so this is, this is how it's running right now and you can see what the agent is doing over here. So if you click over here, it says agent is running and controls are disabled. So the agent is running this particular browser. And then it says it's trying to scroll right now, but actually it's not able to scroll. It's taking a screenshot, it's getting the DOM. And if you go back to your chat window over here, it can actually uh, check, you know, all the things that it's doing with your website. And finally, once it's done all that, it says agent needs your input. So let's return to the agent over here. Let's expand this. It wants a confirmation to scroll the window. So let me just say confirm over here. So let's just click on deny for now uh, because it's somehow not able to control the browser fully. And uh, let's just go over here and let's just stop the agent from controlling this. Let's just actually see what it has made for us. All right. All right. So this is what it has been able to do. So it changed the landing page entirely and you now have uh, the AI language code the future. So it has a, got a nice image over here and it has why the AI language, how it works and so on and it has maintained the previous functionality as well, all right? But this was a very, very, you know, uh, open-ended task for the agent to just redo the landing page. Not a lot of instructions that we gave and it had, it has basically tried to do all it could and then launch this for us in the local testing environment on the browser, right? So this seems pretty promising and now let me just go back to the agent view over here. I'm just going to stop this for now. Right. And what we saw over here is that we have an agent inbox uh, where you actually can try tasks and uh, you can actually work with multiple workspaces. So here you can have multiple workspaces. You can click on any one of them and then actually look at all the chat conversation that you've had with the agent. You can follow the agent's work and look at all the artifacts and you can review all the changes. You can also ask the agent to run your output in the browser. You can then go to the browser and if you have the agent extension installed already, you can then control the browser using the agent where the agent can actually check its work. You have access to the planning mode over here and the fast mode and you have access to different kinds of models over here. And this is the entire agent manager view. If you close this, you can actually go back to your IDE view as well, which is what we've already seen with other IDs. So I'm not going to actually go in and repeat this over here, but you have this chat box over here and you can actually write out all the questions that you have for the agent and then it will work with that on your code base. So that's all I'm going to cover for anti-gravity right now in this particular video. Do try it out and as you use it, if you come across some other interesting features, do let me know in the comments. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in the next video.